Empathy is often taken for granted. However, not everyone is actually empathetic, and even those who are may have varying degrees of empathy depending upon the situation and also the people involved. Now, empathy is a person's ability to understand what another person is experiencing. It's sometimes expressed as putting yourself in their shoes. It's also often divided into three different types of empathy. Cognitive empathy, what someone else is thinking. Emotional empathy, what someone is feeling on an emotional level. And somatic empathy, what someone else is physically feeling. So cognitive empathy, we aim to see what someone is thinking in a given situation, like following someone's gaze to see what they're looking at, literally putting yourself in their position, especially into their mind, so they process what they're actually seeing. And that's the learned behaviour. The more familiar you are with someone, the easier it is to have cognitive empathy with them. Cognitive empathy is something that young people and people with autism struggle with. So, for instance, a four-year-old or someone with autism who's following the rules of a game or laws of society, because that's what they've been told is the right thing to do, may not be able to understand why someone else is not following those same rules. However, as children get older, people with autism become more experienced, they do develop a greater cognitive empathy. What's less generally recognised is that people who are narcissists, or even those who are sociopaths, also do actually have the ability to predict what someone else is thinking, making the person far easier to manipulate and to take advantage of them. The key to their behaviour isn't that they don't understand, it's they just don't care. Of course, we need to emotional empathy, or being sympathetic to the distress of others. In relation to things like bereavement or a relationship breakup, some of the situation where someone's in distress because of the emotions that they're going through. Often people with high degrees of emotional empathy go to what's regarded as the caring professions, such as nursing or veterinary medicine, where the ability to relate to the distress of others can be comforting for the person feeling the distress. However, this empathetic concern for others, people in caring professions, especially in veterinary medicine, have to be a major issue, what's sometimes and a bit inaccurately described as compassion fatigue. It's where daily balancing out of life and death decisions against factors such as costs and the levels of suffering can cause the medical practitioner to burn out due to caring too much or having too much emotional empathy. And while people do change over time due to their experiences, emotional empathy seems to have an innate trait, possibly even based upon genetics, with very young children being able to recognise and respond to the emotional state of others. However, it's lacking or seriously impaired in sociopaths and narcissists. But emotional empathy is present in normal levels in those with people with Asperger's syndromes, but may be reduced as you move along the spectrum in towards autism. So that leads us to the often overlooked somatic empathy or physical empathy, most commonly experienced these days whilst watching television, and watching anything from horror movies to sports events. When we observe a threat even an actual physical injury to someone on the screen, that threat can then cause the viewer to react in a physical manner, to move their limbs away from the threat, or that person on the screen is actually experiencing. Alternatively, on a more basic level, the viewer can experience an increase in heart rate as the fight or flight mechanism starts to kick in. It's possible that the popularity of these forms of entertainment may actually be directly related to our somatic empathy we we'll experience the rush of adrenaline caused by our somatic empathy without any associated risk to our health that the people we are watching are experiencing. In general, though, having empathy with others is a foundation for a well-ordered society. It can be seen in many other social animals, especially in the higher order mammals. However, there also can be a social downside to empathy. An individual who has empathy for someone in distress may then become angry on their behalf or lash out at the person who's causing that distress. If not controlled, this empathetic anger can have serious consequences both for your individual concern and also for society as a whole. 